Today we will be doing some React.js. I will show you how to create a very simple login form with validation and this will be just the front-end part uh, using a library called React hook form. So React hook form is this library for creating and validating forms in React.js that focuses on performance and provides a simple, easy to understand API. I find this library extremely well done and orders of magnitude better than alternatives. For CSS, we'll be using Tailwind CSS. So a few days ago, Tailwind reached 2.0. It's a good opportunity to check it out. But at the same time, I think in terms of look and feel, it will be relatively the same compared to the older versions. As usual, everything will be written in TypeScript. To speed up a little bit the configuration and setup, I will be using Kretis. This is my own tool. In the newest uh, version of Kretis, I added this templating system. So now you can specify a template such as React.js or Vue.js. And this way you can quickly create a full stack application using the specific UI uh, library. This way it pre-configures everything for you so you can just focus on coding the actual application. You can find more about Kretis on kretis.dev. Uh, the project is also on GitHub. If you like the idea, please give it a star. Let's get going. Okay, so that's the form we are going to build. And we have the section on top and then a box with email, password, and then the source, like a select box and remember me checkbox. And then if I open the console and I submit something, it's being displayed. So let's try to build this from scratch. So there will be three parts. The first part will be to create the form using HTML and Tailwind CSS, just a static page. Then the second step would be to connect it with React.js using React hook form library. And finally, we will add some validation and error handling. But before that, we need to generate our project. So I will use Kretis and the command new. I will call the project login form and as I said at the beginning, I will be using this uh, template called uh, React so that it creates this, uh, pre-configures the application to be used with React.js. Okay, so now let's open the project in the VS Code and let's start the server to see if the application is starting. So I will use Ctrl T, create a start, so the application started on the port 5544. I refresh and we have this basic message that everything is okay. So everything in Kretas, everything happens in the um, config uh, client index. So we have this, so we have this React.js initialization code and then it grabs the app component from base view. This is where we are displaying this message. So now if I remove something, it's removed and everything works as expected. So now let's try to design the application in Tailwind CSS. So I will be using this um, extension, VS Code extension called Emmet. So when I write a class name like uh, text center, I can press tab and it will create a diff out of this. So first of all, let's think about organizing our screen. So we would need to have the... So first of all, we'd like to take the whole screen. So min H screen, then we will use the gray the background and I will be using flex because I would like to orient the box in the center vertically. So for that I will be using flex call and justify center like that. So once we have that we would have two sections. The first section would be for the text and the second one for this box. So for the text we would need to have uh, the width medium and full with full and margins set to auto like that and that would be the same for the box but we will also add some margin on top and it will be white with some padding and some border let's say 300 like that so this is the box and this is the text outside so let's see, it works, but we have those strange elements 
This is what uh, Kratos generated. So if I go to index.html, I can simply remove that and that. I need to just leave the ID app. This is where React.js mounts the application. And now if I refresh, I have this text outside and the box and it's, it's properly centered. So let's continue. So now text outside. We would need to uh, have the text, uh, let's say medium XL, like that. And this text will be, uh, let's say, 3XL, bold, something like that, and maybe margin. Okay, and text center. So we have the, the text. So let's take care of the, the box for our form. So we need a form. Let's add some space and inside we will have four sections so the email password the select and then the remember me box so uh, this will be just a diff and inside we will have a label and this will be text small let's say font bold text gray block and this will be email let's see okay and then we would need input so full size with some padding, some border, the same color, maybe rounded and um, maybe some margin on top like that. Okay, it looks pretty good. So if I repeat that this time for password and here as well, it's okay. So now let's add the select. So it'll be almost the same but instead of input we will have select and again full border around it uh, mt1 like that and inside we will have option for example youtube and maybe website let's see okay relatively good and now for the fourth section we have this remember checkbox on the left and forgot password on the on the right so this will be a div which must be flex as well and we need to center the items and then justify between so the one is going to the left and the other one is going to the right like that and inside we need flex again because we need to position the checkbox on the left of the label so that will be another flex and the first thing would be the input and let's add the size and maybe blue around it so instead of input this will be checkbox and then label and text small text gray 600 and this will be remember me let's see okay so now the other diff will be the link so font medium text small and text blue 500 like that okay and finally there's another section we need to add which is the button the submit button so this will be full size and pg blue maybe 600 and maybe hover B700 and rounded medium maybe and text white and text small. Let's see. Yeah. So now if I click, nothing happens. And so that's the first part. We created a form using Tailwind CSS. It's properly aligned and now we can connect it with React.js. So in order to do that, I need to stop the server and I need to now add react hook form as dependency so here I'm using pnpm which is npm alternative and it has this nice property that it stores your dependency dependencies only once on your disk no matter where you use those dependencies uh, okay so we have it installed and now we need to import it so I will import use form hook from react hook form like that and now I can use this uh, <clears throat> and now I need to get the register function out of this hook so there is the use form hook and there's one important detail here you have to use the curly braces instead of square braces so once we have that the register we can use this function to connect 
each input with um, React. And in order to do that, we need to first name our inputs. So for example, here email will be email. And we can now use, we'll be connecting using refs and uh, register like that. So once I do this, if I refresh, I need to start the server. If I refresh, nothing really changes because we need to have a function which submits the form. So let's add this. So we need to get handled submit from the use form hook and we need to create this on submit function and this will be handle submit and it will take another function which will contain the logic we want to use when submitting data will be the data that is taken from the form which means from all the fields that are connected using the register function for now i will just display it and finally i need to connect it so here on submit I will use this function. So if I open the console and if I type something in email, it's being displayed. And if I type something in password, it's not displayed because we haven't connected this field yet. We haven't registered it. So let's fix that. So I'll just copy. Again, remember that each input must have a name. So here will be stores. Finally, the checkbox. And now if I open the console again and I type something, website remember me, and I submit, I have all those informations being submitted when the submit button is being clicked. So now we connected it with uh, React using refs and the register function. We can now improve it slightly. So because we are using TypeScript, we could use uh, we could define the shape of the data we are expecting from this form. So let's create that. So this will be interface and it will be called, let's call it form data. And we will have email, which is string, password, which is string, and remember, which is boolean. And for the source, we could do string, but let's do something more fancy and we will do source anum. So we'll be using the anim to define the values. And in our case, it would be YouTube and website. We are defining those constraints about what kind of data can be set in this form. And because we have this interface, we can now decorate uh, this hook with it, which means that now this function handle submit is clever about the data it receives through this callback and we can for example say that there is email there is password and it knows those fields because of this interface so if i type something which doesn't exist in this interface like foo you have an error property foo does not exist on type form data so now this way you have a little bit more control source and remember and now i can display it as before like that so now we can improve it a little bit by adding a simple validation. So the validation happens inside the register function. And we can, for example, say that this field, the email field, is required. We can also say that the minimum length of this field should be, for example, six, six characters. And maximum should be, let's say, 20. And now, if I open the console and I type something which has four characters and I submit, as you can see, I don't have any message here because it's not submitting. It's being blocked because it doesn't pass this validation. But it, once I type something the proper length, it's being sent. So we would need to now add some kind of clue to the user so that the user knows that something is uh, wrong. And we can do it by using the errors function. So for example, below I could say errors email. And if this field is available on errors, this means that there is an error with this field. And for example, display that email is invalid. So if I refresh and I submit, I have is invalid. If it's four characters, it's still invalid. We could also play a little bit with the visual effects. So we could have this style property and we could say that border color could be um, could be red if there is email and otherwise it will be empty. So if email is in error, so which means it, if there is an error. So let's see. And I submit 
and it's red. But it only happens, the validation only happens on, on submit. We can change this behavior using the mode on the use form hook. So if I say uh, mode on change, now if I type something, it uh, shows the error once I type. And then we can add the same validation to other fields. There's another one more field here. So if we have, if we want to have something custom, like some kind of more uh, elaborated validation, we can use the validate function, which takes the input of the field as it's as the parameter, and then we can do something with it. So we can use some predicates, functions that return true or false, to test this value. So if we have some functions from other library, like a validation library, we could say that is email input. And then we could also in this function, we can connect different validators together using the uh, logical expressions like and or etc. So it, the validate gives us more flexibility. And then there is also the pattern. So we could define, for example, using a regex, what characters could be used for specific fields. So anything that is a regex could be yeah, used in this field. So that's pretty much it. A very straightforward way to use uh, forms in React. Three steps. You create the form using Tailwind. Then you add React hook form. You have the register. You register it in each input. You have to remember that it's not only about passing the ref, but also about naming each field. And then you add the on submit function. You connect it with the form. Once a person submits, you can perform certain logic. If you'd like me to extend this tutorial, let me know in the comments and we could create a backend as well, like a proper login process. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.